Hello Synapse community, my name is Ryan Majidimer and I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Today I'm joined by David Alzamendi for the September edition of the Azure Synapse and MVP video series. Every month I'm joined by an MVP and we discuss a topic that they're passionate about. This month we're talking about Delta tables. I'm gonna hand it over to David for him to introduce himself. Welcome. Hey Ryan, thank you for having me. I am David Alsamendi, an MVP based in Brisbane, Australia, independent data architect and data consultant. Delta tables are extremely useful, and I'm really excited to talk about this topic today. This is a game changer for small, medium, or large organizations trying to unlock the value of their data lake, implementing new data analytics platforms, or getting database capabilities without having a traditional database. Today, I will show you how to create a Delta table using Azure Synapse Spark pools and how to consume the information using Power BI. So David, what are some key benefits of Delta tables? With Delta tables, you can replicate some of the key capabilities of relational database management systems. In a nutshell, some of the key features include versioning, time travel, scalability for processing large volumes of data faster, or being able to execute updates, deletes, or mesh statements that are required for data native solutions. All of this by taking advantage of a low cost storage in Azure Data Lake in an open format using parquet files. Let's dive in and I will show you how to create Delta tables with Azure Synapse Analytics. So we are in Synapse Analytics and we're going to navigate to the Manage Hub because Delta tables, they use Delta Lake. And Delta Lake is a capability that comes with Apache Spark pools. And you can also verify the version of your Delta Lake in the configuration of your Spark pool. So Delta Lake is an open source storage layer, and that brings most of the features that we mentioned before. So now we're going to navigate to our develop hub. I have a, an, Apache Spark pool notebook in here that we're going to use today to create the Delta Lake table. So the first thing, we'll have a staying and a Delta schema. So the staying schema, we're going to use it as the source for populating the information into our Delta table. So we're going to run this script over here. And you can see as well that we're going to run this script using our Spark pool that we saw before. And also you can choose the language to run the scripts that we're going to see today. I use a Spark SQL because it's where I feel confident, but you can use any language. Then we're going to create a staying table. We're not yet creating the Delta table, but we're going to use this table from here as the table, as the information that we're going to use to populate the Delta table. So this is just pointing to a file in the data lake. As you can see here, the customer.parquet file. So the idea is to move that information into a Delta table. So back in our notebook, now we'll make sure that we have some information in that staying table. As you can see, we have a few rows that we're going to load. And then we can go and create the Delta table. So this is the main script for creating the Delta table. You can see that you can define the columns, the data types, as well as the location of the Delta table and partition the information by different columns. So this is extremely useful when you're looking at large volumes of information and optimizing your workload. For this small table, so we'll point to this specific storage place in our data lake. And now we can go and verify actually that this location became available in our data lake. So we'll refresh this window. You see our Delta folder. So if we navigate uh, the path down, you'll see the Delta logs folder where we have all the logs and metadata information for our Delta table. And in the root level, you also see that we don't have any files. So this is where the information for our Delta table is going to be stored. Now, also, if we navigate to the Data Hub, you see that we have enabled the Lake Databases option here. So if I refresh, you'll see our Delta customer table in here. 
which uh, then it becomes important when we want to consume the information uh, from it. So back to our notebook, now we're going to load some information into our delta table from the staging table. Uh, so we'll run this script from here, make sure that we load some rows. For example, today we're going to be looking at the specific customer. So we'll look at the salesperson for this client. You'll see that what we're going to do actually is to update. Now we're, we're, we're able to start running updates, deletes, merge assignments on top of our delta table. So we're going to update this row from before. We're going to define the salesperson as Kevin H for that customer. And this will help us look at the version history and the time travel capabilities within the delta table. This is one of the most amazing capabilities, being able to review the history. So you can see by executing the describe history of the delta table, we'll see the different versions from the creation, the insert and the update. And if we look on the right side, we also look at the information, the predicate that we have included in the update, but also the number of rows that we have updated is available for us. You see that we have updated only one row. This is, I think, game changer when it comes to easily find how many rows we have modified and, and having some metadata about, about our workloads. And in our Azure Data Lake, if we refresh the folder, now you'll see the information related to the different versions, which is here. If we navigate back to our notebook, not only being able to keep the versions, but now we're able to look at the information at a specific point in time of versions. So if you look at the different versions, we'll select version number one to see how was the record before the update. And we load that into a data frame, making sure that we display only that specific row. So it's easier for us to visualize the change. And you can see that previously that client did, did have a different salesperson, but you can also go back to the latest version to query the information, which is, is quite amazing, right? How easy it is for us now to look at the history and to also start comparing how the information is changing across time. This is how easy actually you can create Delta tables using the Spark pools. What do you think, Ryan, about this capability? That's awesome. So. How do you create Delta tables and consume the information in them? Good question, Ryan. You have many alternatives. My preferred combo is to use Azure Synapse Analytics serverless, so you only pay for consumption and then connect Power BI. But you can also use Synapse Spark pools for advanced data analytics workloads or some popular platforms like Datarix to query Delta tables. Let's go and have a look at consuming the information out from Delta tables with Power BI. Back in our Azure Synapse Analytics, you'll see that before we look at the Lake database. So I want to show you two different options. So in the Lake database, you can easily expand your database and look at your table. And from there, you can easily import that into a notebook, a SQL script or machine learning models. In this case, I'll replace the column with a star. So we see all the information. And this in the back end, it is using serverless, so which is quite amazing. But what if we want to add some business logic and make it available to Power BI? You can also use the SQL database. And for that, we're going to create a database as an example using serverless. So let me navigate to master. And here we can create a logical database using serverless or so create database. We define a name, in this case, like we synapse serverless, run this command. Um, we'll have to refresh the information in this window. So we see the new da database becoming available. And you'll see now as part of the SQL databases. And now we can easily create uh, either external tables or create a view that we can use in Power BI. So name the script, so we can create a view using the same script from before. So we run this command, we're in the serverless database that we created before. And now the view becomes available as part of this option. So now I'm going to show you actually how 
you can use Power BI to connect to this information in here. So in Power BI, we're going to get data and you'll see one of the, the latest connectors for that have, has been released. Um, it is a Synapse Analytics workspace connector. So if I'm going to choose the workspace connector and this will list the items and objects available in my different workspaces. So we'll choose our workspace and when we look at the Delta Data Lake option, I'm able to select the table already. So, and now from here, could be import mode, direct query, all, all of it using serverless capabilities and making things really easy for us to start building visualizations. So we load our customer information into the model. We can start building visualizations. So we can select the heat map, add the salesperson as a category to see how busy our salespeople are and a count of the first name, and here we have a visualization. So essentially, we're taking advantage of Power BI, excellent for actionable analytics, we're using several lists, we pay only for the consumption, the, the information that we read, on top of Delta table, and using a, an amazing metadata layer. Now I'll show you as well how to use another option, that is the Synapse connector. So if we navigate to Synapse, we select the Azure Synapse SQL connector, and now we, need to get the server and database information. I'll go back to Synapse and we copy the connection string from the built-in SQL pool and we copy the information into our Power BI options. And you can see I selected direct query as well because you can run direct query using the serverless engine and when we connect we'll see that the view becomes available as well using the SQL database and serverless options. So we can use this table as any other data asset in Power BI. So we and start building visuals depending on our requirements. And start building amazing reports using Power BI, using serverless, and we only pay per, for consumption. We're using the Delta tables in Delta Lake that brings all the metadata layer for us to start having database capabilities without having databases, which is amazing. And a lot of new different options for small, medium and large organizations in data native solutions. So I'll hand it over back to you, Ryan. Thank you for having me today. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Thanks for joining us, David. Tell us in the comments, do you use Delta tables? What do you use Delta tables for? I would love to hear about it. Again, my name is Ryan Majidimer. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Synapse on Twitter, Azure underscore Synapse. You can find David on Twitter, Tech Talk Corner. Also, if you are into Twitter and social media, the Azure Synapse Influencer Program. It's very fun and exciting. You can get to access Ask the Expert sessions that are exclusive to Azure Synapse Influencers. You get badges. You get, uh, there's more stuff, titles, mm, three, I believe. It's very fun. You can find more information in the description of this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.